So um, let's continue. Um, I'm very happy to announce Stain, who is working uh, with Intel, and he's talking about programmable unified memory architecture, Puma, and how you do. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, I'm afraid that's going to be another hardware talk, but uh, I'll keep it simple and hope that you uh, appreciate the fact that the hardware is also uh, evolving and that we're looking at more uh, efficient um, processors for graph processing. So, um, as you all know, graph processing is getting bigger and bigger and graphs are getting bigger and bigger and we want to process more uh, data. So we set ourselves a, a uh, so we found that, that we need to increase the efficiency of graph processing versus the existing architectures such as CPUs and GPUs. So to that, um, we propose the programmable unified memory architecture, uh, abbreviated as PUMA. And in this talk, uh, I want to um, explain to you why graph processing is actually challenging on the existing architectures, what makes PUMA fit for graph processing, some um, high-level details about Puma and how it performs. And after this presentation, you probably get a question, can we buy Puma? Uh, unfortunately, not yet, because it's still under development. Okay, as you all know, Intel is the market leader of high-performance uh, processors. Uh, and in these processors, um, we've implemented a lot of things for regular applications that work very well, such as branch prediction, branches, uh, and more in, in uh, regular applications are very uh, predictable so we use that to predict branches ahead such that we can flow the instructions more uh, in a continuous way we have caches that assumes that if you access some data you will like, access it uh, again in the near future or uh, its neighboring data uh, we have vector operations that perform the same operation on neighboring data and all that works good for regular applications but graph applications, as the previous speaker also explained, are not that nice uh, for these uh, uh, architectures. For example, many of the uh, graph, applica uh, uh, graph applications have many branches that are data dependent. So uh, the actual outcome of the branch depends on the data that is in the graph and which is, uh, of course, not predictable. So branch predictors don't work well. Um, Data is also accessed in a scattered way, so that was also introduced by the previous speaker. So you access the neighbors, and the neighbors are not the next nodes in your list of nodes. They are scattered all over the place. So caches don't work well because you don't use the uh, neighboring data or don't reuse the same data, and the same for uh, vector operations. So we, have, we see very low performance on uh, regular uh, CPUs for graph applications. Many people have proposed to use GPUs. They are actually better in uh, general because of higher bandwidth and more threats, but they actually suffer from the same problems. Um, if branches diverge, so go to another direction, then you cannot, uh, the parallelism cannot be fully exploited. Uh, scattered memory accesses uh, prevents to use uh, memory coalescing, meaning that all of the efficient things you cannot use in GPUs too. And we also saw uh, before in previous presentations, there is a problem of memory capacity and scaling out. So what are potential solutions? Uh, there have been proposals of graph accelerators, so that specific chips made for uh, graph applications that have uh, some functionality, for example, that implement sparse linear, linear algebra algorithms or vertex centric algorithms. Um, the problem there is that you're fixed with that functionality. So if your application or your algorithm works best for uh, within the sparse linear algebra, but your uh, accelerator is a vertex-centric uh, operation accelerator, then you need to transform your application. And uh, potentially, you, uh, and you also need a host, so a CPU that, that controls this accelerator, and there is the data transfer between both. Another solution is to have a general instruction set processor like the normal CPUs, but that's been optimized for graph applications, which is then uh, more flexible because you have an instruction set, you can implement other algorithms too. It's self-contained, you don't need a host per se, and that's actually what uh, our approach was in Puma. Okay, I've talked about the challenges. 
that graph applications pose. Uh, so how did we solve that in Puma? Most of the graph applications are very uh, memory bound. So most of the time, if you have a, a very fast core, a Xeon core, for example, it's just stuck by the slow memory. It's waiting uh, forever, so you can't, cannot use all of its speed. So instead, in Puma, uh, we have much lighter cores, much slower cores, but we have many of them. Uh, so they still wait for memory, but because we have many of them, the total throughput is higher. I said that before caching was a problem. Um, so the problem is that uh, if you load data, you only need that one element that you, know uh, that you load, not the full uh, cache length. So in a conventional architecture, you lo load the full cache length from memory uh, through the memory bus into the cache and then to the core. But as you see, the blue, only the blue points are used. It's very inefficient use of the cache capacity and of the memory bandwidth. So um, it means you waste a lot of uh, uh, things, uh, a lot of um, potential. For Puma, we have a lot of cores, but we also optimize the memory accesses such that you can access only a single element. Uh, we bypass caches because they're not efficient to uh, get more chip area for cores and other stuff um, and get uh, a more fluent flu uh, flow of uh, memory operations. Another thing is the uh, size of the graph. So if you have a very large graph, you need to partition it and put it into multiple nodes, uh, multiple compute nodes, multiple servers. Uh, but then when the graph al algorithm wants to access a, a, a data on another node, it needs to go to the whole uh, communication stack, which takes a lot of time. And unfortunately, uh, graph algorithms are not very predictable in their locality. So uh, it often happens, occurs that we need to go off uh, node, giving a, a large performance penalty. So for Puma, we have this uh, hardware distributed shared memory. So there is a shared memory across the whole system. Uh, you don't need to uh, think about communication. Uh, the network is high bandwidth, low latency just to reduce the uh, latency or the performance impact of remote uh, accesses. Another thing that we saw that is that there are very, a lot of common patterns in graph applications. And we uh, designed some offload engines that uh, efficiently execute these uh, patterns. For e example, atomics are very much, uh, very much used in graph algorithms. But for a core, that's a very, uh, intensive operations. So you have to log data, you have to load the data, update it, and write it back and uh, unlock the data. So the core is often uh, stuck a, lot of, a long time performing this atomics. So in Puma, we have this offload engine that performs the atomics uh, that to relieve the core from performing these atomics. So just the, por the core issues an atomic instruction, but leaves the execution over to the offload engine. And the core can continue uh, executing other instructions in the background. Or, uh, so the operation is done in the background, and the offload engine looks where the uh, data is located and performs the update locally. Similarly, a gather operation. So for example, if you want to gather the, uh, some um, characteristics, the characteristics of the neighbors of a, a vertex, uh, the normal operation is that you load the uh, index of the first, first uh, neighbor, uh, then you load the data of the neighbor and store it somewhere. So that's a very intensive uh, process for the core. So we have this DMA uh, gather offload engine. So the core again just issues this DMA gather instruction and then continues executing. And in the background, the offload engine performs the necessary memory accesses without actually needing to move the data, all the data to the core itself. Uh, other operations are memcopy, barrier skews, and, and so forth. So going to into a little bit more architectural detail of a single Puma core. So that's a schematic overview of, of a single Puma core. Uh, it consists of multiple pipelines. So each of these are pipelines. Each pipeline supports multiple threads. Why? Uh, like the previous uh, presenter says, said, uh, most of the time we are waiting for memory operations. So if we are waiting for memory operations, we just switch to another thread. If this one is also waiting, we switch to yet another thread and so on, just to hide all of these memory latencies. Uh, we have limited caches. You have an instruction cache and data cache, which are very small. It's for a very local data, such as the stack of your uh, thread. Um, 
The instructions executed by uh, this course are a novel instruction set that we designed. It's based on a reduced instruction set, so simple instructions. And we added uh, specific instructions that are uh, can be used by graph operations, such as a single instruction in direct load. Um, because we have limited caching, um, we don't want to go to main memory all of the time for data that's been, been uh, consumed and produced locally. So we have a manually accessible uh, scratch pad, so the programmer can decide whether to cache its data, to use a scratch pad, or to go to main memory. Uh, it's part of the global address space, so other cores can also access the scratch pad of uh, this core. Uh, I talked about offload engines, so they perform these operations in the background. Uh, we have a memory controller that's been optimized for these uh, small accesses, 8-byte accesses, and we have a network interface to connect to other cores. Also, of course, using these 8-byte packets because most of the data is, trans, uh, is used in these small granular granularities. Okay, the full Puma system, as we envision it, is, um, is hierarchically built. So you have multiple of these cores that form a tile, multiples of these tiles form a node, multiples of the no these nodes form a system, uh, and um, that means that a, since you have already that many threads on a core, you have that many uh, cores on a tile and so on, that a full system can easily uh, consist of millions of hardware context for threads. Um, again, the global address space and the memory is shared across the full system, uh, so you can access any data from any point in the system. Uh, of course, this requires a very high bandwidth, low latency network, so we use HyperX network topology. This is the textbook uh, representation of this, so you have a hierarchical um, a design where within each level all, everything is uh, fully connected and then on the next level there are connections between the, the, the levels. Um, furthermore, we plan to have op optical connections between the tiles and between nodes again to increase bandwidth and latency. More interesting for you maybe is how do we program this beast? Um, that's still work in progress, so we're also working an, at a uh, software infrastructure for this um, architecture. Uh, initially, where we did our f uh, first experiments with is a simple SPMD-based parallelism uh, using C, and we use uh, intrinsics, special intrinsics for the Puma-specific instructions, and uh, LLVM for building a compiler. Um, in the meantime, there has been uh, increasing support for C++, pthreads, OpenMP, and some tasking. And we're also looking at uh, implementing uh, common graph libraries, other programming languages, and a Python front-end. Okay, uh, now, importantly, does Puma uh, fulfill its promises, namely that it's more efficient to generate, uh, to uh, do graph um, analysis on it. Of course, the uh, uh, chip is not available yet, uh, neither is some. So we are also working at a FPGA model, but that's not uh, ready yet. So basically, our <coughs> results that I will show are, are based on simulation, where you take a Puma binary, um, you have a functional simulator that decodes the instructions of the binary that performs the uh, actual, simulates the operations, and I have the timing simulation that gives us, uh, that models all of the hardware structures such as the cores, the memory, <coughs> scratch pad, network, and so on, and that gives us a performance number, and also, interesting for um, um, developers, a uh, profile of how the execution looks like, uh, where co cores are idle, that's the uh, pink part, or used or waiting for memory, that's the uh, light blue part, such that the developers can um, optimize their, find the bottlenecks and optim optimize their application. We also have an analytical model, which I won't go into detail, because simulation um, is a very intensive process, so we can simulate up to a few tiles, but after that it becomes quickly um, infeasible and then therefore we use this analytical model which we then validate using simulation on a smaller course. Then we took a, a whole bunch of uh, kernels, uh, graph kernels and applications. 
we run them on a uh, high-end Intel Xeon server with four sockets. Uh, we optimize them if needed, and we also, also ported and optimized uh, these applications for Puma. And the initial estimates show that uh, uh, this high-end Xeon server with four sockets will approx uh, uh, approximately consume the same uh, power as a Puma node will consume in the future. <coughs> so. Com uh, comparing their performance is also a energy efficiency uh, comparison. We also did some multi-node on Xeon, but that didn't work well because you, sit, you have this um, communication overhead um, that results that the result was that we saw no speed up for most applications or even slowdowns. We projected to 16 Puma nodes, and as I will show shortly, this uh, scales much better. So here is an overview of some of the applications and performance results. So it shows the speed up of a single Puma node versus a uh, high-end Xeon server. And you see that there is, a, there is always speed up, there is a, but there is a large range. So it goes from two times to 200, more than 200 times faster than Xeon. That's because um, some applications are more compute <coughs> intensive, to, so, so they do more compute. And of course, there the Xeon can use all of its resources to efficiently do that. On the other hand, if it's purely memory bandwidth bound, such as random walks, then we see a, a very huge uh, performance increase. And the uh, 16 node projections also show that it scales much better than Xeon does. Okay, that was basically it. So I showed you that Puma is a programmable instruction set processor for graph applications. It contains many features, which I discussed, uh, and we show that it's through simulation and modeling that it's one to two orders of magnitude faster than a equal power Xeon, and it scales well to multi-node. And it's still under development, of course. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much. Uh, very interesting perspective on craft processing. Um, question. Well, I think you see that this will be sitting. Do you think that this will be affordable as a workstation, or would you say, no, this is a cloud installation that is somewhere in a server center, or where do you see it? So the question is, is whether this is a, is a workstation, a PC, or, or desktop-based thing, or a... Uh, no, it would be more in a data center uh, or, or big uh, supercomputer setup. possible, uh, kind of going uh, onto what he, he asked, uh, to have these cores as like co-processing cores, like um, you have like a few big uh, normal cores and a few Puma cores, w would that ever be a So the question is if, if we plan to have some, let's say it host nodes or, 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 or yeah, um, we're still working on that, so there is an, there is an option to have potentially uh, x86 nodes that, that, that do more of the uh, other stuff that this is not efficient for, but that's still under development. Mm -hmm. um, do you manage memory consistently in the same way as you do on the desktop nodes and the Xeon nodes? And if so, why would you choose those methods rather than using Puma cores? And if you could tell us well, Sorry, I... I <laughs> Uh, it's not in the same way as on Xeon, but I'm afraid I cannot go into details about how it will work. So, uh, yeah, one more question. Uh, uh, you mentioned sort of the shared memory sort of architecture, yeah. um, and that there's different sort of processing units. Um, does the does it matter where uh, in memory is the location of the values needed for certain cores? So if they're close by, there'll be a faster access, or it doesn't matter since it's an all-to-all -all connection, but what's the pe penalty of a data being further away in memory to the core that needs Okay, so the question is, is, further, is data that's further in memory, will it be slower to access it? Uh, yes, of course, because it's a very large system. It's distributed across. Uh, the system will be distributed across multiple nodes, multiple racks. 
So there will be a, a larger penalty, but because of this, all of this memory latency hiding techniques and these offload engines that, that perform it very efficiently, you won't see as much as you see in conventional multi-node setup. Maybe take uh, more questions uh, after the talk. So thanks again.